presented by Captain Morgan. Please drink responsibly. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. You're in New York today, Tony. Are you enjoying yourself? I'm Tony Kornheiser, yes. Earlier today, I learned I am not the father. Whoa. How great is that? Oh, DNA. Your How great DNA is that, huh? has proven you are not the daddy. I'm not the daddy. Okay. Uh, do you have one of those specially made Scotty Cameron putters that says, I am not the daddy? No, only somebody Maury in has that the putter. Room has that. Somebody in that. Somebody right. in this room right now, Maury has the putter that says, I am not yeah, the daddy. Well, absolutely. Maury's, you know, got that low, low handicap. Welcome to PTI. In today's episode, could Antonio Brown be the MVP? Should the Orioles trade Manny Machado? And how much better does Kawhi Leonard make the Spurs? But we begin today with the Patriots' stunning loss to the Dolphins in Miami. Okay, maybe this shouldn't be so shocking, since Brady's career record in Miami is 7-9, and nine, and the Patriots have lost four of five there. But it was the feeble nature of the loss that's hard to shake. Brady was 0 for 7 passing to convert on third downs, and the team was 0 for 11 in those situations. And at least one Dolphins player was quoted afterward as saying Miami's collective will was stronger than New England's. Ouch. Tony, do you see this as a fluke loss, or do the Patriots have more to worry about than that? It's so wonderful that you did the lead on that and you set it up in such a negative way because you know that I differ from you on our stance about where the Patriots are. I've always been more cautious. I've always been less optimistic than you. I don't have that view that you do, Mike, that Coach Hoodie, as you call him, automatically yeah, walks out on the field and they win every game. Look, I, I, Brady was, was not good in this game terrible. at all. Yeah, he was lousy. I, I, I look at it this way. He's thrown interceptions now in three straight games, and that is slightly worrisome to me, but only slightly. What is much more worrisome, and you'll appreciate this, is they made Jay Cutler look like a great quarterback. <laughs> yes, they okay, did. Okay, so what kind yes. of defense is that? are you depending on that is making Jay Cutler wow. look great? Tony, I, yet you are right on everything you said in your little preamble there. I am saying this is a one-off because okay. I cannot accept that the New England Patriots, they looked lazy last night. They looked listless. Tom Brady wasn't, he wasn't just inaccurate. The passes were skipped in like he was throwing cutters to his receivers. Tony, I looked at it and I just thought, wow, did they all get some sort of Kornheiser sleep drug on the way down to yeah. Miami on the flight? So I still believe, yes, that Coach Hoodie and Brady will scream and holler and rant and rave and study and just bore their way out of this game, and it's a one-game deal. So it's not that I think it's just a one-game deal, but I will tell you this, that even if they had won, the home field in the AFC was going to come down to next week in Pittsburgh yeah. anyway. They were going to have to win. The winner of that is going to right. get home field. Looks like What's it. Yep. good for the Patriots are two things. Gronkowski comes back, and right. he's an open right. target, and the Patriots have beaten them four times in a row. Four in a right? row, and Tony... A right. week of Belichick after last night? There's Probably. no way I'm betting against the Patriots now. No chance. Probably. Not next Probably. week. Here's a sidebar to that game. Tom Brady struggled, obviously. He's an MVP candidate. Carson Wentz out for the rest of the season, MVP candidate. Russell Wilson was picked three times on Sunday, MVP candidate. Wilbon, in the absence of those candidates, would you vote for Antonio Brown for MVP? I don't know if I'd no vote for him. No wide receiver has ever won this. That's right, Tony. He's on pace for 120 catches and 1,850 yards. Antonio Brown? Not, I'm not ready to hand over my vote yet, but I could. I, I could. And by the way, you know, in, in researching this, and I'm sure you've had this feeling too, weren't you shocked that Jerry Rice didn't win this award in 1987? Yes. yes. Oh, my God, he had 22 touchdown receptions that year in only 12 games. But Mike, you're the one who the says all the time it's a quarterback league and the MVP's yeah. a quarterback deal. Tony, I'm going right now. The name I wrote down is Russell Wilson. I know he had three picks. I get that. If it's not Brady, it's still Brady and Wilson to me in some order. And Brady had a bad game. Listen, anybody's going to have a bad game. Antonio Brown hasn't had every game be a great game. But, Tony, he's also playing with Roethlisberger. He's playing with Le'Veon Bell, who might get some votes as well. So I I'm not ready to give it to Brown, but I'm not excluding him. He is he's the best receiver in the league. So what's interesting about this is my natural inclination would be to say to give it to Ben Roethlisberger because he's the one throwing the ball to Antonio Brown. 
But Ben Roethlisberger this year, I want to get this straight, he's got 13 interceptions already, which is the third high in the league. Which is not to say if he has a great game against the Patriots and they win out, that, that he wouldn't get it. I always look for one of those backs who runs the ball and catches the ball, like Todd Gurley. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. like Le'Veon Bell like on Gurley. the same team. Like Melvin Gordon. Those people have a lot of touchdowns. I'm inclined to people like that more so necessarily than, than wide receivers. But in the end, it could end up being Philip Rivers or Drew Brees and, and all the quarterbacks we've mentioned already, except yeah. for Wentz. Because if you get your last three to four games yeah. and you're great, you sway the voter. Yeah, bro. you know what, Tony? That game, the New England Pittsburgh game, really could sway a lot of things. Not only yeah. home field, but it could give a little push. You know, over the pile to one of the guys you just mentioned. There must be so little to do down in Orlando at baseball's winter meetings. I say that because Tom Ferducci, the absolute ace reporter for SI and Fox, is reporting that you Darvish's beatdown in the World Series could be a result of pitch tipping, according to an Astros player. Apparently, the smoking gun is that Astros hitters swung and missed only twice on 48 sliders and cutters and hit 556 off those pitches. Tony Darvish is a free agent. Would the ease of correcting that flaw, pitch tipping, make you more inclined to sign him? Okay, so Darvish was terrible. He didn't get out of the second inning in the World Series. Two starts, right? He didn't yeah. get out of the second inning. That batting average of 556 against breaking balls is astonishing. I mean, you, can, you can't pitch in the minors if that's what's going to happen. So if I heard this about pitch tipping, I would have two reactions. One would be great scouting on the part of the Astros. Absolutely great scouting. Absolutely. You know, my, give, uh, you know, my I'll, reaction. I'll, I'll applaud them. And the flat. second thing would be, if I didn't like you, Darvish, I wouldn't care about this. I would say, who cares what happened? He can't pitch. If I did like you, Darvish, and I was inclined to give him some money, I was, okay, this is the golden key right here. This is why it happened, and I will still give him money. But, Tony, we have so many excuses. We, we, we did a story or two during the postseason, I can't remember what it, it was, uh, juncture exactly, about how slick the balls were, and nobody right. could throw sliders. So what is it? I mean, did he have a fever? Did he have a boo-boo? Did he have a bad cold? Did he have a bad uh, batch of avocados that he went Tom Brady recipe on? I mean, stop it. I had a Hall of Fame catcher once tell me that on an off day, his job was to try to find out if he could note some pitch tipping. It doesn't. You, you, I'm going to tell you something. You can know what Nolan Ryan was going to throw for 20 years, and you still Mike, couldn't hit it. Two things stand out. One is if you saw Darvish in the games leading up to the World Series, his curveballs and sliders broke as if they were wind aided. They broke five feet. And the second thing that I would point out is how could the Dodgers not know this? How could they not know this? Tony, maybe he wasn't pitch tipping. Maybe it was just bad oh, execution. I'm willing to maybe believe he, he had was. a blister or a boo boo. No. I'm willing to believe that no. they got something. Bad avocados. Kenny Rosenthal, no. speaking about baseball, Kenny Rosenthal is reporting out of the baseball winter meetings that the Baltimore Orioles are aggressively trying to trade their young star infielder, Manny Machado. Machado, who hit 33 homers and drove in 95 runs in a down year, is under contract only until the end of the 2018 season, and the Orioles are convinced they will simply lose Machado to free agency, so they're looking to get starting pitching in return for Machado. Well, Bond, do you understand what the Orioles are doing? No. He's been their best player. He's 25 years old. He can play third base or shortstop. He's saying he feels more comfortable as shortstop. So, no, I, you, Tony, you know every year this happens to a lesser degree where people, because a guy only has two more years or his salary's higher than they want to spend after they signed him, they want to dump the best player on yeah. the team. He's the best. Now, the he Orioles is. have had some crazy issues where the owner doesn't sign off on what the general manager is doing. I mean, they've had this stuff going on for a long time. But no, getting rid of Machado, no. But I, I got a soft landing spot or two for him, and I'm sure you have some suggestions too. Well, I mean, I, I think Machado is a great player, and I remember having this discussion with you during the middle of last season, and I love Bryce Harper, and I said I would trade Bryce Harper even up for Manny Machado because I think he's got a tremendous amount of years left and he doesn't get hurt he's reliable he's there every single day but i said this the other day and i'm going to repeat it. It, it this is in the shadow in the wake rather of stanton signing with the yankees and you know that the red sox are going to move heaven and earth to compete with the yankees financially yeah. and where does this leave the orioles and where does it leave the blue jays and where does it leave the rays in that particular division look at these listen to these names mike okay 
Stanton, Judge, Machado, Harper, Trout, and your boy Bryant. These guys are going to get unbelievable contracts the next time around. Yeah. And I could see baseball becoming the land of the rich and the land of the poor. But aren't the Orioles a rich team, even though it's a no. slightly smaller market? Why aren't they? The, I don't think Tony, they are. the Rays aren't, but Toronto has to be. Toronto's, what, the fourth largest city in North America? Don't tell me they're a small market because they're I in think, Canada. I think that the rich teams gobble up the other teams. And what you have to do is have greater scouting to okay. sign guys yes. young and yes. keep them for five or six years. Because yes. then you lose them. But if you get rid of Machado, seriously, we, I mean, I wouldn't trade him. <laughs> trade him in at all. No, he's a great player. Kawhi Leonard's name for the first time this season has been written into the lineup for the San Antonio Spurs. Tonight is his season debut. After missing all 27 games this season and those final four games of the Western Conference Finals that they lost because of an injured quad. Now, here's where stats lie like a rug. The Spurs have gone 19-8 and this season and 33-12 and without him the last two seasons. So, Tony, do you see the Spurs with Leonard being worse than, better than, or right with the Warriors and the Rockets? Kawhi Leonard is one of the best five or six players in the league. So the Spurs are going to be a lot better, even though when I look at them, I see a team that's trending older, and I don't see that with Golden State. I would remind you that last year when Leonard was healthy, LaMarcus Aldridge was not as good as they thought he was going right. to be. And I wonder if the effect of Kawhi Leonard going back has a deleterious effect on, on LaMarcus Aldridge. And this is something I don't know. But if you ask me specifically about Golden State... I, I, you know, I think they're, I think they're the best. They are the best. I mean, I just they think the they're best. the best. But there's another team in that question. And I'm going to address that a little bit. Okay. First of all, I don't care what the damn stats say. If anybody thinks that the Spurs would rather say, "Oh no, we'll let Kawhi go play for somebody else," oh, no, that's because we're 33 and 12. No, without no, no, no. Okay, crazy. That would be stupid. Crazy. All right, so crazy. throw them out of the room, if not the right. country. Okay. Now, Kawhi Leonard is, is the, the may be the best two-way player in the league, and if he's not. He's one of the two or three best. Throw Kevin Durant because they're having a great, another great okay. season in there. They're not as good as the Warriors, but Tony, right. need I point out, they were up 25 points on the Warriors I in know, and Oracle. Collapsed. And they with, collapsed. With Kawhi in there when he got right. hurt. Now, right. I mean, if people can't look at this and see, and they're better than Houston. You know why? Because Houston hasn't won a championship, and Kawhi Leonard has. Chris Paul, you know I love Chris Paul. Hasn't done yeah. that. James Harden, great. Hasn't no, done I that. Know, Mike D'Antoni, great coach, hasn't done that. So they have to catch the Spurs, not the other way around, talking about and, Houston. And I give you all of that, but I still look at the Warriors as a team Take that... Me, you and me both. It serendipitously has, has understood how basketball is played right now yeah. and plays it better than yeah. everyone else. Just they, they they're do. better. They do. They're better. All right. Let's take a break. Coming up, which AFC West team do you trust more? The Chargers... Or the Chiefs. And is it possible that the Pacers actually won the Paul George trade? Toss up is next. You think anybody out there is looking at those stats saying that why? Are you in my chair? Are you in my chair? No, I moved my chair in here in your spot. I don't like Get your chair. Get out of my spot. I don't like your chair. Pardon the interruption is presented by Captain Morgan. Holiday like a captain. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. Time for toss up. The game that small, insecure men claim to win to feel good about themselves. What? Let's get the first one from the producer over the loudspeaker. Toss up. Who will bounce back to be the bigger star? Carson Wentz or Deshaun Watson? Bigger star. This is tough. I really like Carson Wentz. I really like what he's done so far. He looks like a prototypical NFL quarterback. I would compare him to Aaron Rodgers. But Deshaun Watson was absolutely electric in the short time that we've seen him. And honestly, Mike, I would never use the word electric to describe Carson Wentz. My, my fear with Watson is that he's smaller. If he gets hit, he could be hurt. I'll take Wentz, but if you force me to take Watson, I'm just as happy. Yeah, I'll take either one, Tony. And I think the thing that scares both of us having around Washington, D.C., when Robert Griffin had the same sort yes. of start got yes. injured in the playoffs, and was never, never, never close never. to the same. And we look at that track and field body. Now, Deshaun Watson's a little bigger and stronger than RG3 was. He just is. He's, he's, he's you know, he's just bigger. Um, Carson Wentz is bigger. He's that big yeah. quarterback size now with all these guys are 6'4 and a half, 6'5", 6'6". So I might go with Wentz just because I, I, I worry about the physicality and what it might do to Deshaun Watson. What's next? Toss-up, they're tied for first and play on Saturday night. Which team do you trust more, the Chargers 
or the Chiefs. I don't even have to listen to you. I know which way you're you going. The temptation going. in this is to pick the Chargers because they've been so hot lately. They're seven and two in their last nine, and in his last four games, Philip Rivers is making an MVP run. He's averaging more than 300 yards. He's got eight touchdowns and no picks. But what the Chiefs did in the previous game against Oakland convinced me of something. That was really clutch. They needed that game. They blew them out. And this game is in Kansas City, so I will take the Chiefs knowing you will too. What is it that I hate about the San Diego Chargers for the entire 16 years of this show? They take naps. Sometimes at the beginning of the season, sometimes yeah. later. The other thing is they're never reliable. No matter who we – remember how long did we root for them because Norv Turner, who we love, yes. was the head coach. Yes. They take a nap on anybody, anywhere, anytime. Maybe it's the weather. You cannot count on San Diego. So by default, and I like Andy Reid and the Chiefs much more anyway, the answer is the Chiefs. It's, it's not San Diego anymore, but go You ahead. know what, it is San Diego. Go ahead. What's next? Toss up. They play each other tomorrow night. Who won their big trade? The Thunder or the Pacers? Oh, there's no question the Pacers won the trade. Of course they won the trade. They were going to get nothing for Paul George. He was going to walk away. They were going to get nothing. They got Oladipo and they got the Sabonis kid. Their record right now is better than, than Oklahoma City's. They are in the playoffs. Oklahoma City, if the playoffs started today, would not be in the playoffs. Now, I would trade for Paul George, too. I mean, that's a more interesting team. But in terms of the specific question, the Pacers won the trade. Right now, certainly, Tony, the Pacers are 16-11, and 11, fifth in the East. Oklahoma City, 12-14, and 14, and as you said, ninth in the West, out of the action. Right now, here's the, the stunner. And, of, of course, Oladipo, back in his sort of, sort of home state, Indiana, home is here, actually, is Urban D.C., but in Indiana, the state where he played his college basketball, they have yeah. embraced him again. But Sabonis, he's having an all-star season. Sabonis, Tony, 24 minutes per night, averaging 12 and 8 and a half. They I mean, he's trip. got a higher PER yeah. than Paul George. So the answer is they, the Pacers. Yes, yes. All right, what's next? Last one, toss-up. They play tonight. Which big man would you rather have, Joel Embiid or Carl Anthony Towns? I'll let you go first happily because I don't know. Well, you've got to tell me how many games Embiid is going to play. Yeah. Because that is, that's the $25 million question per season for Joel Embiid. Is he going to play 50 games? He's been in the league three plus seasons. He's only played 52 games. The other guy plays every game. Yeah. Okay. He played 82 <laughs> and then he played 82 and now he's played 27. Every game. And because I can write his name in a lineup and because I think he's really good, my answer, he doesn't have the upside Embiid does. My answer is Towns. It's Towns. Who was the coach, by the way, who said the greatest ability is availability? It's a great line. Whoever said that is a great line. You know you're going to put him in there. And some of his numbers, Cats numbers, are a little bit down this year. They got Jimmy Butler in the lineup. They got a different lineup. They're trying to figure out what to do to become a great team. And Embiid has an enormous upside. But I, I'm taking Towns, and I would be happy if I have Towns, too, by the way. Yeah. That's it. You know who, who lost, right? Let's take a last break. But still to come, Jerry Jones says, get this, Tony. He hasn't yet been holiday like a captain. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. It's happy time, people. Happy 28th birthday, Mike Glennon. Personally, I thought his birthday was whatever day he signed with the Bears to make $16 million this season. And that was about a minute and a half before the Bears then went out and drafted Mitch Trubisky. Bottom line is the Bears are still looking for the first quarterback of consequence since Jim McMahon was drafted 35 years ago. Yeah, $16 million to watch Mitch Trubisky. I wish I got half of that to watch you. <laughs> You're not getting that. Happy anniversary, Gale Sayers. On this day, 52 years ago, in his rookie season, the Bears' incomparable back scored six touchdowns in a single game. Still the NFL record. Four rushing, one receiving, one punt return. Any franchise have better Tony than Sayers and Walter Payton at running back? By the way, Paul Horning scored five that day, running over and around the Colts in Baltimore. Shortest, most brilliant career ever. He was a comet across the sky. The comparable thing in baseball is Sandy Koufax. Thanks for the signed autograph, by the way, Tony. Happy trails to Devin Hester, the best return man in NFL history. Okay, we can both make a case for Dion. Officially retired today after 11 seasons. Here's the tally. 14 kick returns for touchdowns, five punt returns, and one missed field goal return of 108 yards for a total of 20 kicks returned for touchdowns. Tony, you've long made the case Hester belongs in the Hall of Fame. You still with that? 
You did all three happies on Chicago did people. Did you notice that? You hijacked the show. Did You're you sitting that? in my chair. Yeah. I'm not dealing with this anymore. No. No, no I-95 for you, big boy. No, no errors no. today either. We're running out of show. Let's get to the big finish. Jerry Jones says his resolution to delay a contract extension for your boy Roger Goodell is still on the table for the owners meeting in Dallas tomorrow. Are you surprised? It may still be at the table, but nobody's sitting at that table anymore. That's done. The NFL warned teams that anyone who abuses a game official will face significant wow. discipline. Does that make sense to Is you? Is he talking to Sean Payton? Who's he talking to? The Jaguars banned four fans who threw objects Sunday. Your thoughts? They should be banned from every single NFL stadium, everywhere across the country. It's terrible what they did. The Bulls beat the Celtics. They've won three in a row. I assume you're coming around on Fred Hoiberg. Hoiberg is doing a great job with this team, but we're winning too much. I want the Duke kid. I mean, you got to tank for a reason, even though those guys aren't tanking. They're playing. Last one, Lakers and Knicks tonight. You're going to go to that game at the Garden? No, 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 no. I'm going to the inductions at the Sports Broadcasting Hall of okay. Fame. Our friend John Walsh is getting in, and I'm there to congratulate him. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Corn. And I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. Shout out to Damian Thomas and Lindsey Corn. The Museum of African American History here in DC. Thank you very much for the tour. Next time, I'm bringing Tony Povich at the beginning of the show.